All right, so let's start and let's see if uh, more people join us along the way. Yes, so we're going to talk about um, the AutoWiki browser. I found it to be a very useful tool in making repeated edits, especially for me, I particularly use it to do, um, to clean up pages, um, work on typos, um, yeah, and just do basic modification to, to, um, to articles. Um, but you can use it for so much more. This is just like 5% of the, the capability of AWB that I use. You can use it for so many other things. You can use it for mass, um, um, what do you call it? You know, um, creation of um, uh, mass creation of articles. You can use it to add categories to so many pages and organize categories. You can use it to modify templates. And it, it also has um, this powerful capability of using regular expressions to find not just simple typos, but actually phrases and then modify those phrases accordingly. So this is going to be very short, hopefully. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to, to just uh, let me know. So you would have downloaded AWB already. Um, you download and you unpack it. You unpack the zip file. Um, if you are using Windows, it's pretty simple. You can you can get the you can get the latest download on the, the, the latest versions, which is six two one zero, I think, as of um, August twenty twenty one, on the sourceforge.net under the projects. You'd find AutoWiki browser there. Um, the first thing you do, obviously, you need to log in. You need to um, choose your the wiki that you want to use it on. So you log into the site, and then um, you log into to the to the right wiki. Okay. Um, where can you use AWB? You can use it on all of the wikis, technically. Um, however, I use on Wik, um, the English language Wikipedia and on Wikimedia Commons requires admin approval. But for the other wikis, it's pretty relaxed. You can basically just use it without asking anyone. But if you do encounter errors, or if you do find, you know, encounter any challenges on logging into AWB, um, yeah, just let me know. Then I can. I can see if there's any restriction that has been put in place for our wiki. So far, I don't think so. All right. So let's let's see how you could log into AWB. So I'm just going to log out of everything. Exit. And, and just open AWB again. I need to open it from yeah wiki browser okay so you know basically once you unpack it it's you you would have all of these files in the folder then you can simply just um, you don't need to do any install after that you just have to um to click on go to wiki browser and then you get this interface. Um, it tends to save the memory of uh, the list of files you were previously working on. I don't want to do that. I just want to start from scratch. So I'll just delete all of these. OK, this is the interface. You would see that. Um, it says here user, which is red. You can use, you can go here to log in, or you can also um, log in using the profiles here. 
So just click on there. Once you see that it's red, it means you are not logged in. So you click on it and then it would allow you to enter your password, your username and password. And then um, it's better to actually save a profile so that you don't have to keep entering the username and password anytime you open up AWB to use it. So I have saved my the different accounts that I have on Wikipedia and then I've saved the password. So all I have to do is just double click on the user I want to log in with. Now, one thing here, if you have a two-factor authentication enabled um, for your Wikimedia user account, you would not be able to log into AWB. So in that case, you would have to get a bot account. Okay, so you get a bot account and then you use a bot account to log into AWB. Now the bot account that you create, the, um, it's basically your own username, all the edits you make from the bot account is represented by your username. So it's not like two separate accounts, so to speak. It is one account, but you need to actually have the bot account with its password in order to be able to log in. That is if you have two-factor auto, um, auto, authentication enabled. If you don't have two-factor authentication enabled, you don't have to worry about creating a bot account. So I have that, um, I have that enabled. Um, so I use the AWB account and I log in. Now, it is likely that, um, so you need to select the right wiki to use. So I, I want to use the Tabernacle language Wikipedia. I want to do the edit there. If you want to do it on English Wikipedia or on uh, Gurunyi Wikipedia, you have to change the, the Wikipedia language uh, or the Wikimedia site basically, because you can use it on common on all of the other Wikimedia projects. So you simply just click on the, click on this um, dot, you know, click on this um, thing, just next to your username on your left, and then you get to select the, the project, if it's Commons, Wikisource, blah, 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 then you get to select the language here as well. So I have set mine to Wikipedia, the mind Wikipedia. So I have nothing else to do. All right, now um, I'm all set for the basics. I have um, logged in, I have selected the right Wikipedia I want to edit. So the next thing you would want to do is presentations. Yeah, you would want to make a list of pages that you'd want to work with because you need to select a list of pages that you want to, you, you know, to, uh, to do something with. So how do you do that? Once again, um, I'll show you the interface. So you make a list of the pages you want to work on by um, selecting some uh, some some basic criteria here. Uh, you can select, you can make a list with categories. For example, let's say I want to make a list of, um, what's, where, um, males on Wikipedia. We have a category on the main Wikipedia called do. So I enter it into category, who, then I make a list. Then I get a list of all of the people who, all of the articles that have a category called do. Okay, this is an example, this is an example. All right, so now I have a list. You can also make a list based on what's 
random pages, for example. Um, where is it again? Random pages, yeah. So I just cancel uh, to remove all of them, to remove, I mean, to, um, to clean up the list form, you just have to um, select all of the articles and then click on uh, delete and then it deletes everything. Now I want to make a list based on random pages. So I select random pages from the source and then I'm able to make a list. I can make a list based on someone's user contributions, for example. Let's say I want to make a list based, a list of articles based on the user contributions of, let's say, um, yeah, Shutobo, for example. I make a list based on their most recent contributions. I can make a list based on titles of pages, so you can explore this on your own. But one important thing, and one really nice tip that uh, you could take notice of is, um, you would realize that here, you don't have anything that gives you all of the articles, all of the pages in the Dagana language Wikipedia but you can actually make a list based on that and to do that you select special page special page and then under special page if you ask it to make a list oops no no random pages i mean special pages special page Special page, where are you? Okay, there you go. If I ask to make a list, it tells me that <clears throat> um, it gives me, so it now wants to pick up the source of um, the start of the list, like what criteria it's going to use. So here I can choose all pages, you see all pages here and then I can select the namespace so again um, for people who don't know what the namespace is the namespace is um, the different kinds of pages on the on the media wiki installation so we have on the Guardian language Wikipedia for example we have um, we we have uh, the main page which is where the articles, the article namespace. We have um, Munsu, which is an English um, user, user page. We have like Wikipedia page, which is like more like the project pages themselves. So you, you get to select um, the main space. Top pages would be uh, Munsu to app. And then categories would be Pubu. Okay. So I select main, which is the main article, uh, the main article space. And I go, okay. And then it gives me a list of all of the articles in the Bible Library Wikipedia, which currently stands at 1,539. Now this includes redirects, this includes um, uh, yeah, articles, redirects, and that is it, yes. Okay. So I have a list of, um, I've made a list of articles to work on. That's the second stage. So what do I actually want to do with these articles is the next big question. What do I want to do with these articles? Based on, I have a list of things. So what do I do with them? Now, you can fix typos. You can build your own typo, typo lists. You can add tags to pages, for example, stabs or category. Um, you can even add templates and categories. 
you can fix typos based on regex uh, regular expressions which is so much more powerful than um the the form where i'll show you in the next slide where you can enter a typo and you ask the system you ask in wb to find this typo and if you find this typo what should it do with it what should it do with the with that type? How should it fix it? All right. So after getting the list to work on, what do you want to do with those pages that we just pulled up? And let's say I want to fix typos. All right. So if I want to correct typos, for example, um, I would have to build my own list of typos. I think what we could do is to create a page on the Ghana language Wikipedia with a list of typos so that people can add to them and then just copy them and not have to build something from scratch. But I'm just going to demonstrate with one um, example of you know the kind of typo that I'm going to look for. So in AWB, I um, I go to stats here and then under start um someone wants to join we'll just accept them okay so under start here i um i go to options and then in options i check find and replace and then I open normal settings. So let's pull this here and then demonstrate. I go to start, I go to options, um, find and replace, which is this. I make sure that I check it. Once I check it, I open normal settings. Okay. So under normal settings, I get to, to build my typo list. Here, I already have one typo that I defined. You wouldn't see it, but it is um, it is a double space. Let's expand this. It is a double space. And I'm replacing all double spaces with just one space. There's no need to say it's case sensitive because um, spaces don't have a case sensitive. Then I just add a comment so I remember what that particular typo is. So let's add another kind of typo. Let's say um, so you know this. Some of you have been using this tool. What's it called again? It's called uh, Charlie Keyboard. And with Charlie Keyboard, there is this character, the um character is wrong. It is wrong in the sense that it is not the regular um character. I made a complaint to the developers of the tool and they said they were going to fix it, but there hasn't been a fix yet. So I'm going to look for this character. Wherever it appears in the Dagbani language Wikipedia, I'm going to look for it and replace it with the right character. So the Dagbani characters. If we go to the Dagbani language Wikipedia, you would find your own character. It's supposed to be this way. So the bottom of it is supposed to extend below, um, below an H, for example, or below an I or a J, for example. And that is not the case. Wait, what we have? in the Charlie um, tool. So I'm going, I'm asking AWB to find this wrong character and replace it with the right character. Um, I wanted to look for both 
the small versions and the, 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 um, the caps version of it. So in that case, I would leave, I will not check case sensitive. I will not make it case sensitive. Then I just need to add a comment here so I remember what it is I'm actually asking AWD to do. So it's to change the wrong character in the wrong character. This Charlie, Charlie keyboard. Place it with You don't have to add a comment if you know what you're doing, but um, I mean, after a while, you actually forget what actually were the, the typos we're trying to fix. So it's better to add a comment there to remind yourself and your future self what it is that you were doing. What else? Let's add another. Let's add another um, typo. Let's say. Um, boom. We spell boom like this. Oops. We spell boom like this. Okay, it's not working. I'll just copy this. We spell boom like this. Unfortunately, some people spell it with boom. Wrong. I don't know what Google means, but this is what it's supposed to be. This is what fire in the garden actually is. So I'm asking AWB look through all of these pages that I just listed, find Google, replace it with Google. So Work here. So let's just experiment with these with these um three and then see. So I save okay. Now I just created um I just created a list of typos to look out for and correct. If you once you log out. Once you log out of AWB, you lose the memory of the find and replace typos you just created. You lose the stable. So in order to avoid not having to do it anytime you log into AWB, it's better to save this profile. So you save certain, uh, save settings as a you can save it as a default. Or you, you can even name it if you are doing separate things like, you know, but it, it, you can just save it as the defaults as a start. Are you sure you want to save these settings as the settings as the default settings? Yes. Now, if I log out of AWB and come back 10 years later and I run it, I'm going to still have the memory of those three um, find and replace issues that are listed for AWB to look out for. So, what next? Now I just have to, so, um, to run it. So start. And then what am I doing? You can enter a default summary, like say, um, and then replace issues, whatever you want. And then I start. So it's looking through all of the articles, as you could see to run in here, one after the other. And it passed two or so without finding any of those three problems. But the third one, 
uh, Abdul Muttalib Hussein. It just found something here. And it's going to, once it finds um, a typo based on the, the criteria I gave it, it's going to pop up. So I'm just going to explain what is happening here. Now, this is the article as it exists currently. Okay. And you can enter um, an extra summary of whatever issue it is that you are, you are finding and replacing, like an edit summary, more or less. If you don't, it's just going to say, just find and replace issues, replace issues based on the summary that I gave it here. Then you, the top, the on the interface on the top left, it is highlighting where the double space is. It, so it actually found a double space, and then it, and that's the current version of the article. On the right side of the interface, top right side, it is going to show you what's going to happen after it makes that edit. So that's what's happening here. It's just comparing the current version of the article and then the future version of the article should you actually move forward and save the, uh, the issue that AWB found out for you. So another thing to look out for is this alert box. Now the alert box, um, it's very useful in, in the sense that AWB also has, um, it's not just a dumb interface that does what you want. It also is able to suggest certain things for you to change. It could suggest that it, uh, this article um, is a stub, but hasn't got a stub template. So maybe consider adding a stub template. It can suggest that more than one word, more than one word is hyperlinked on the same article. So let's say um, this article about Afamutala. Let's say um, Tamale is hyperlinked, and then another section of the article there's Tamale, which is also hyperlinked. Usually on an article, you just need to hyperlink one word or phrase, you don't have to repeat the hyperlinks else it's, it's something else, it's not, a, it's not a good practice. So look out for the alerts too, it can tell you a lot. All right, so I think it's good. And I can also go ahead and actually change the article here, add stuff in the article here if I want. I don't think I want to do anything. Probably I can remove this old info box thing because we now are using the data box that pulls the info box um, variables from Wikidata. So I can just delete this. I can continue to make changes in this article where I find it. Once I'm pretty okay, I save. And then it keeps looking and finds the next issue for me. Um, let's just go on to my contributions and see if it was actually saved. So if I go into my contributions, I see that I just made an edit, you know, and the, the summary was find and replace issues using AWB. Um, you can even, you know, go to the article itself and then check that it was AWB that made the revision. So you can see the last revision was made by Dian Shutobu and I just made this a few minutes ago. If I check the difference, what I actually did was removing the old info box templates and then 
I uh, I deleted one of the one of the um, one of the extra spaces it found between January and Gwale. And then AWB, being clever enough, also discovered that there was um, an extra tab between these two categories, and it, it didn't do anything about it actually. So, um, yeah, so the change was made as part of my user contributions, but via AWB. It takes me to the next issue. And this next issue, like I said, um, look out for the alerts. So here it's telling me that Jean was um, was hyperlinked three times. Jean was hyperlinked three times. Um, so look, I can find this first Jean is hyperlinked. Another Jean is hyperlinked, which the second one isn't needed once we have a first hyperlink. And then you can see a third hyperlink here. So AWB is asking me, do you want me to delink these selections? I say yes. Select a link to remove either manually or by clicking a link in the list above. So uh, I guess double click. And it takes me to the first one. And then, um, yeah, this one. First one, second one, and then the third one. So let's delink the second one, I think, and then the third one. And then the third one. Otherwise, all of these other revisions, the three of them, the four of them, one, two, three, four are all spaces, five, I think, which looks good to me, nothing else to do, so I save. <coughs> it makes the edits and it goes on looking for the next one. So let's try the third one. And then uh, the third one, Abdul Rahman San. So no alerts, it's just spaces that is fixing. So save. Ghana, this ad club are Ghana. Should it the link one of them? Oh, this ad club about Abdul Majid Waris, sorry. Ghana is linked twice. So it's asking me if it wants to the link one of them. Yes, just the link this one. And then I save. And it keeps going, 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 going. Um, some time ago, when I was um, when I started using AWB, you know, it's pretty much I click, 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 because most of the suggestions it makes are accurate. Um, you know, based on based on the based on the criteria you give it. Now it is it doesn't do it like it requires a semi-automated it wants to have a process like this gone by itself you'd have to write a bot for it um so awb sitting between manual edits and then bot edit and this is important because it's making sure that the changes that you are making is really the changes that the human has reviewed and thinks is, is accurate and so which is good. Now, when I was um, when I started using AWB, I haven't used used it in a very long time. But that was in 2013 or so. I was so obsessed with making uh, with increasing my edit count that I actually downloaded another tool. You know those tools that can just um, keep clinking, keep uh, clicking on one point. So I downloaded this tool, and then the tool just kept, you know, clicking on save, 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 and I could go to bed and come back the next morning with thousands and thousands of edits made in my name. 
I got into trouble for some of them because some actually needed human review because they were actually not what um, they were actually unnecessary edits. Uh, I got into some trouble with that, but nothing major. I just um, kept doing it until I got tired. Uh, but it's no longer an obsession of mine to increase my edit count. But um, yeah, I don't encourage you to do that. So, but I'm just telling you that um, if you're thinking about doing that, someone has thought about that before. <laughs> and it's, it's um, yeah, it's not a good practice. Anyway, so this session is pretty straightforward and um, something else I wanted to show you, but I think we can leave that for later is how you can use AWB to create articles from scratch. I haven't used that to create articles from scratch, but it's not difficult if you follow the, the tutorials that were given. So I'm just going to share with you this link. You can actually create new pages using AWB if you want. It will involve a little more of, um, you know, some tweaking and writing the BAD, just copying and pasting this and then changing, changing the location of the files and then preparing your text in the TXT format. Yeah, so I just want to make, uh, make, make it aware that it's possible to create, to mass create articles from scratch, not just editing them using AWB. And if you want to talk more about that, I'm happy to organize another session to show you. So that is it. And I hope you enjoyed this AWB session. Use a tool with caution, with caution, and try to teach others how to use it. There are so many issues with the Bengali language Wikipedia articles. And um, one way that we can fix them is using tools like this to actually find them easily and then get them fixed. So happy editing and enjoy the rest of your day.